If you're a follower of Jesus, you don't go to church. You are the church. See, the church is the people of God saved by the power of God, filled with the presence of God, to be about the purposes of God in everyday life. God is concerned not just with Sunday, but with every day. When I was asked to step into the church that I presently lead, they invited me to lead the church, to move away from a Sunday-only perspective of church to an everyday reality where every single moment counts. What I found as I began to lead and equip and teach, I heard over and over and over again people say, we're too busy. See, they weren't disagreeing with the conclusion that they were called to be the church. They weren't disagreeing that all of life mattered. They weren't disagreeing that they need to engage wisdom into all of life. But the reality is they were so busy with so many things that they didn't know how to take wisdom and apply it to the things that matter most. See, so many of us are slaves to our schedule instead of letting our schedules be servants to the purposes of God. And so we need to know wisdom, and we need to know how to apply wisdom. See, wisdom is not just the right thing, but learning how to apply the right thing in the right way at the right time to the right situation. Proverbs 14, verse 12 says, There's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. In other words, if we don't get wisdom from God and we just follow whatever seems best to us, we'll lead ourselves in a way that doesn't give us life and life abundant. God's desire is that you would seek Him and find Him and receive wisdom from Him for all of life. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 14, we hear, The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, that one may turn away from the snares of death. God's desire for you is that you would receive wisdom so that you might live with abundant and full life. That's why Jesus came. That's why I'm inviting you to engage in this study with others, to really ask God, what does your word say, and specifically what do the Proverbs say to the stuff that matters most in my life? How do I apply wisdom to make space for the things that matter most? And as we ask that question, we're going to ask the question, what is wisdom and how do we get it? Wisdom is knowing the right thing and knowing how to apply the right thing in the right way at the right time. The book of Proverbs tells us that in order to actually understand and apply wisdom, we have to get wisdom. So the question we should ask is, where do we get wisdom? Where does wisdom come from? Proverbs 9 Verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Now, when you hear fear, you might think dread, some kind of just fearful, scary thought about God and His wrath and His judgment to come. And there's reality to the fact that God has wrath against sin. But when the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, it's not talking about a fearful dread that leads you to run away from God, but rather an awe of who God is that would lead you to run to Him. In other words, it's the heart saying, I am not God, but I need God. I cannot do what God can do, and I desperately am in need of what God can do in my life right now. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom because the fear of the Lord leads us to go to God who gives us wisdom, who grants us what we need for all the things that we struggle with in life. It's interesting, if we don't get wisdom, we'll walk down a path of foolishness and the life of foolishness leads to a life of destruction. Proverbs 15, 33 goes on to say that the fear of the Lord is instruction in wisdom and humility comes before honor. In other words, the fear of the Lord shows up in somebody who's humble enough to admit that they need wisdom from God. And as they go to God in expression of their need for wisdom, God honors that request and that posture and gives it to them. He loves to give wisdom to those who ask. In fact, James tells us that God is willing to give wisdom without reproach to all who ask. Throughout the Proverbs, we're going to see four different characteristics of people who are in the posture of humility, receiving wisdom because of the fear of the Lord. The first is teachability, that they are saying before God, I am not God and you are. 
I don't know it all, but you do. I'm lacking, but you're not. And I need to submit to what you have to say to me. Teach me. Show me your ways. Show me the way to walk so that I'll know how to live. And I have to do that regularly. So often, God reveals to me how lacking I am in the knowledge of the way to go. I'm so prone to go in the wrong way, so regularly I'm brought to my knees before God and say, God, I need your help. I need you to teach me the things I don't know. I need you to show me the way through your word. The second is not only teachability, but repentant hearts. Hearts that when God reveals to you what's broken or what's wrong, the ignorance that is in you that gets revealed by the truth of God's word, you're willing to get on your knees and say, I, I, I turn back to you. I've, I've gone to other things that are lies. I've gone to other things that are gods. I've turned away from you. Instead of looking to you for wisdom, I've looked to the world. I've looked to myself. I've looked in all the wrong places. And so I repent, which is a biblical word for saying, I turned back to God who gives wisdom. Maybe that's what you're going to discover in this study as you go through it, that not only do you need to submit yourself to God's word and his wisdom throughout the Proverbs, but he's going to reveal to you areas of your life where you need to turn back to him because you've been running the wrong way. The third characteristic is that we become a surrendered people. So we're teachable, we're repentant, but then we surrender. In other words, we say to God, God, my life is yours and every part of it is yours. You get to speak into it. You get to tell me what to do. You get to tell me where to go. You get to have access to all that I am. So if you want to make space for wisdom to be applied to the everyday stuff of life, you're going to have to open yourself up to God and say, God, speak anywhere you want. Address anything you need. Speak to me about anything that's going in the wrong way, the way of foolishness instead of the way of wisdom. And then the last characteristic is one who's submitted. One who's willing to say, I don't want to stand in judgment over you and your word. I want your word, which is wisdom, to stand in judgment over me. I don't want to stand over it, but I want to sit under it in submission and let you be my God and let wisdom be the way that I walk. Be teachable as you go through the study. Be repentant, ready to turn back to God when he shows you you've gone in the wrong way. Be fully surrendered in any area he calls you to surrender to him. And then be submitted. Let his word and let his wisdom have authority over your life. Some of you might say, man, I've been going in the wrong way. I already know it. I want to give you hope. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the word way throughout the scriptures is God's way of saying a pathway of righteousness, a kind of life that leads to abundant living. The good news is Jesus is the way for you. He is the way of wisdom for you. He's the, the one who walked the path perfectly for you. So as you realize you're lacking throughout this study and you realize you haven't been walking in wisdom, I want to encourage you to turn to the one who is wisdom, Jesus Christ, who is the wisdom of God, who walked the path of righteousness for you. And not only will you find that you're going to need Jesus as you go through the study, but as you look at Jesus, who is the wisdom of God, you're going to find yourself amazed at how he lived a life full of wisdom and everything he did. In fact, the more I look at Jesus, the more I realize I'm so not like him, which tells me I'm so far from being wise like God wants me to be. And that doesn't lead me to despair. That leads me to Jesus. It leads me to say, not only is he the way for me, but he is the life for me. He is the truth for me. He is the only way that not only can I be made right with God, but that I might have the wisdom of God poured into my life so I can live a life that resembles the wisdom of God that is Jesus Christ. As you go through the study, be teachable, repentant, surrendered and submitted, but be ready to run to Jesus, who is the wisdom of God for you, who walked the way on your behalf, who not only shows you what it looks like, but shows you you can't do it without him and will lead you to a desperate need for Jesus yourself. And know he is ready not only to receive you, but to pour out his wisdom into your life as you express your need for it. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and that's going to start with you humbly admitting you need it.